morning everybody good morning good morning Taylor you're supposed to be on the phone working I got all your messages about where are you it's so late where are you I was like I'm trying I got a late start good morning good morning good morning Um, okay, so good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk live from Los Angeles. Um, it is Friday. I go home tomorrow. I can't wait. Oh, Ann, I'm so sorry. Um, I can't wait. Um, quick update on Knox for those of you who know that on Wednesday he shit all over my house. Um, Knox has had, um, Giardia or whatever that stomach bacterial dog thing is and that's why he got sick all over my house or my bedroom and I remember exactly when he got it I was walking him like three days before that and there was like a still puddle of water like in the mud from the rain and he started drinking out of it and I remember pulling him away and going oh now you're gonna get diarrhea guess what he got diarrhea because when dogs drinks from still water, like nasty still water, there's bacteria in it and it infects their intestines and literally gives them disgusting diarrhea. So on top of that, Knox was neutered yesterday. So they called me to tell me that he came through the surgery really well and he has to wear a cone because he keeps trying to lick his incision open. Um, and so he's going to stay at the vet until tomorrow um, because I didn't want him home with the kids without me there because they, he needs to relax and be left alone. I know his belly hurts and his, now his balls hurt and he just wants to be left alone and my kids don't, will not leave him alone. So, um, anyway, um, I got a message from a woman that said, dear Jamie, as of this week, my husband is divorcing me. Um, while I have not been the best wife, he constantly, emotionally, and mentally abuses me, and he moved out. So why is it that I keep find myself sitting here staring at the door, wanting him desperately to walk in and hold me? So let me get this straight. You want the person who is emotionally and mentally abusing you to come in and hold you. Um, why, what happens when we want the people who hurt us to heal us? In movies, we call that a false victory. We believe that the person who's hurting us will see the error of their ways and they will come to us at the end of our sadness and they will put their arms around us and say I'm so sorry for all the pain I've caused you and all I want to do is help make it right this doesn't even happen in movies it's such bullshit okay um, when you want the person who's hurting you to heal you you are still in denial about who they really are you still believe that the, the representative you fell in love with is the real version of who they are. And this emotionally abusive person is the temp. So you believe that you can get through to the person you fell in love with. I know that feeling. I have been there. And I am here to tell you, you couldn't be more wrong. The person you fell in love with was the representative. I don't care if you saw that representative for three years, 10 years, 20 years. People who are not abusive don't become abusers. That is not what happens. A good loving man do doesn't start a mentally and emotionally abusing his woman like on a Tuesday because, uh, you know, he didn't get pancakes and like all of a sudden he's an abuser. No. 
That's it. No, you, you fell in love with the representative and people go, but I don't understand. And we were together. He was so great for five years. Great. Then he was a fucking representative for five years. Amazing. Now you're seeing who he really is. And the person you want to make it better doesn't exist. And I understand what I know right now that you're going, you don't understand, Jamie. We had an amazing relate, Girl, I understand. You think I don't understand? I understand. I've been through it. Some of these representatives can, can present themselves for years. For years. They can make they can be good to children. They can be good to everybody else but you. These representatives, like, people are like, I don't understand because I thought the representative was like 10 weeks. No, that's typically when the mass starts to come down. But some of these people can keep that shit up for a long time. Some of them really want to be different. So they really try. They fall in love and like they try to be good. And then old habits die hard just like when the chick tried me at Whole Foods and I really wanted to whoop her ass because that's who I am I didn't because Olivia was there but if I was alone it would have been ugly in the vitamin section right so my re I am a representative of who I am I am a work in progress I will always default to physical violence that is who I am I don't I'm like almost like a somebody who you, who is an alcoholic but doesn't drink you're always an alcoholic so when you stop drinking and you're sober, you're still an alcoholic. You're an alcoholic who is not drinking. I am a physically violent human being who is not fighting. These, these abusers are abusers who are not abusing for whatever period of time they decide to do it for, but they are abusers. This is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you. And I know that people go like, how can you claim to be a good person, Jamie, if you know that you're a physically like violent person? I mean, because I want to be good. I want to be better. I don't want to be physical. I don't look for those things anymore. I don't want that. So what has to happen now when you are in that situation and you want the person who is hurting you to heal you, you have got to stop looking at him and start looking at yourself. What is it about you that would rather be abused than be alone? And don't you dare tell me love. Because what you are protecting and what you are holding on to is not love. That is not love. So what is it about you? For example, Jamie, what is it about you that what makes you wanna physically fight all the time? Okay, well, let's get honest about that. What is it about me? I was bullied when I was young. I was called fat. I was told I wasn't good enough. I was made fun of outside my home and in my home. Once I realized that physically I could stop people from hurting me, I got physical with them before they could hurt me. Then once I realized that fighting and winning fights gave me popularity and notoriety, but really fear, because people really feared me, they didn't really like me. That made me feel good too. Then my dad got sick and I had an excuse to fight. Oh, Jamie's fighting because her father died. Oh, well shit. Now I got an excuse. I'm out here beating people up. People are letting shit slide. I know what it is about me. I need to stop the cycle of hurt people hurt. I, I need to work, I know what it is. I'm, I'm honest about it. But some of y'all are like still looking at the man or the woman, the narcissist, the, the abuser going, but I don't understand why he and I don't understand why she, who cares why he, she, anything. It's not about them, it's about you. Why do you want the person who is hurting you to heal you? And if you can figure that out, you can really start to heal. I can't give you that answer. I'm about to throw up all this celery juice Katie made me drink. Listen, I'm not kidding. I'm not the one. I'm hot. Oh. Woo, Chile. So, I can't answer that.
for you. How do you stop hoping they will change? You start to accept the fact that you know they will not. It's okay to say, I wish they would. It's not okay to believe they will. You see the difference? You could be walking in the rain and be like, man, I wish it would stop raining. Okay. I wish it would stop raining too. But what you can do is walk out in the rain, getting soaking damn wet. Talk about it ain't raining. No, you're delusional. It's raining and it is raining on your head. So you can wish they were different. You could wish they changed. You cannot be in denial that they will. There is a difference there. That's what I'm telling you. Okay? So with me, I have stopped denying who I am inherently and started accepting the fact that I need to work on me so I don't act a fool. You know? I don't, like, I know, I don't want, every time I find myself saying, like, I wish a bitch would, like, I wish she would try me. As soon as I find myself sliding into that space, I go, okay, Jamie, what are you feeling insecure about today? What are you feeling, you're clearly feeling less than, because the only time you want to fight, you want to instigate fights is when you're feeling small. So what are you feeling small about? So when you're in your situation, you don't have to stop hoping that they'll change. You can hope that they'll change for the rest of your life as long as you accept that they won't. You have got to accept that they will not change. You could go on your life, date other people, marry someone else, have 10 kids, and still wish that the person you loved at one time would be different. Wish it all you want. You wish upon a star, you can wish on birthday candles, but you can't, you've got to accept that they won't. And as soon as you accept it, you'll start to heal. Hey, I'm here at my meeting, yay. Okay, I love you guys so much. I love you, I really, really do. This is me right here, sir. I love you, I have to go to my meeting. Um, wish me luck. I'll check in on you guys later. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're... Have a good one. Okay, bye. Um, I love you guys so much. And I'm going to check on you later, okay?